going to talk about strategies on how to prepare some of the items you got in your winter food box, starting with the leafy greens. So I will say, before you get started, um, you want to just make sure that you can inspect and clean all of the items that you receive in your uh, food box. And this is just to make sure that what you're putting into your meals and into your dishes is uh, crispy, clean, and it continues to be fresh and healthy. So right here, what I just washed was our Swiss chard. And what we're gonna do today with the Swiss chard is saute it. I like to saute uh, these leafy greens like this uh, with some, a bit of olive oil or some type of seasoning as it keeps it flavorful, but also uh, offers you many different options to put this into either a pasta or soups or whatever you choose to do with it. Next, we've got our collards. Again, we're just gonna wash these very carefully. And what we're gonna do with the collards is braise them. And braising them maintains the flavor of the collards, keeps them nice and perky, but at the same time breaks it down just enough for it to be tender as you eat it. All right, and now we've got our curly kale. Again, we're just gonna clean this just a bit. And with the curly kale, I'm gonna show you how to prepare this into a fresh salad. So not all of your leafy greens have to be cooked, but there are some options for eating it raw and it's just as delicious. All right, so now we're getting ready to prepare our sauteed Swiss chard. As you can see, it's really colorful and this is gonna look nice inside of the pan. I also have a clove of garlic, as you remember from the food box. We've got some chopped onions, extra virgin olive oil, some fresh seasoning and herbs right here, and a little bit of lemon juice. And I'm gonna show you how all of this marries together for this dish. Take off the ends right here, and just go into chopping it. If you like uh, bigger slices of garlic, uh, you can chop it like that, or if you like. And now we're gonna go into chopping our uh, clean uh, in, in inspected Swiss chard. And it's okay that it has a little water on it. That's actually gonna be really good for the pan. And I know you're thinking, you know, oh, what if it wilts? But it's actually gonna be nice and flavorful. So you're just gonna gently slice this chard. Now, we're ready to go into the pan. And one thing that you wanna do is set your skillet, uh, get a nice medium sized skillet and set it to medium. And then you're gonna increase that temperature once you prepare to put in your, um, your ingredients. But now we're gonna go into adding a little bit of this extra virgin olive oil, not too much, just a little bit. And another thing that I like to add first is uh, some of our herbs. And this really just kind of enhances the flavor. And next, we're gonna add our chard. Oh yeah. You're immediately gonna open up all of those flavors. And I wanna add that Swiss chard, even though it has the texture of something like spinach, it's actually gonna have a flavor that's very similar to beets. They're actually in the same family. And then next we're gonna add our garlic. Oh man, it's smelling delicious already. And then we're gonna add a little bit of onions. And all of these things break down and, and start to cook at the same time, and they, they cook at the same rate, so, oh yeah. And so really the purpose of sauteing is you don't want to get it too soft, but you want it still nice and colorful, but everything nice and tender, so that you can still preserve that nutritious value that's within all of the produce. And now, We've got a little bit of lemon juice. And so I know you're probably thinking, oh, what are you gonna do with some lemon juice in, into your, your sauteed dish and what's the purpose? 
Well, lemon juice actually is a good replacement for salt. So if you want to minimize any type of salt intake in your dishes, lemon juice would be the perfect thing to add and you don't need much. And all of your flavors are coming out. Oh man, this smells delicious. And just like that, you've got some sauteed Swiss chard with some other vegetables like onions and garlic, fresh herbs and olive oil. Very simple, nutritious, and you're good to go. And now we're going into the braised collards. And so what I like to do for this dish is simply prepare uh, some uh, nice, sturdy, leafy green collards. And so what we want to do here is cut this uh, rib out. And all you have to do is just go simply like that, take it out, compost it, of course. And we're going to do that with all of the other greens here uh, and prepare that so that everything is nice and tender and uh, delicious and edible. So before I chop these uh, greens up, I also want to talk about some other ingredients that you see along here. Now, braised greens are not only delicious for some of those uh, fibrous greens like collards, but you can also add some other ingredients that will actually enhance the flavor of your collards or other leafy green and it's just really delicious remember i told you onions were a staple and i like to include it in everything well here we are we've got it right here so we've got some chopped onions a bit more lemon juice extra virgin olive oil some more uh, non-salt seasoned and herbs and we also have a, a, a low salt bouillon cube. And I've also got a secret. This did not come into your produce box, but I happen to have this in the pantry. This is simply a turnip root. And the reason why I like to add the turnip root is it gives you that extra texture of something to chew on alongside of your leafy greens. And so when you pick these in season or if you purchase this from your local market, you'll find that it has the perfect amount of sweetness, but at the same time, a nice earthy texture that goes really well with any leafy green. So I've chopped that up and we'll be adding that into the skillet. So I know everyone has their own way of preparing to chop collards, but I'm just gonna quickly show you one of my techniques and that's simply to roll it up because these greens can be so wide at times. Oops. And what I like to do here is just cut it long ways. And the reason why I cut it long ways and then also cut it across is it allows the green to be uh, basically sized in a more manageable bite size. And what we're gonna do is actually um, add our water first um, because sometimes oil and water when you mix them together you get some crazy stuff that goes on and so we don't want to create violence we actually want to create goodness so we're going to add a little bit of water here there we go and after you add your water that's when you want to add your bouillon cube this low salt bouillon cube add that into here and you can take your spoon. You see this already starting to melt in the water. It's creating all of that flavor. All right, and now we add the other ingredients and this is going to be absolutely spectacular. And these greens with the collards uh, being picked in season, they're going to uh, have their flavors enhanced by this bouillon cube. So we're gonna add that into here and then we're going to add in our onions. And now we can add in just a little bit of oil, however much you would like. Just mix this in just a bit. 
And though you see my herbs and seasonings right here, one thing I like to do is make sure that this is added last. And the reason why I like to add it last is because everything is going to take uh, quite some time to cook and you still want this to just kind of complement everything that you have cooking in the skillet. So you add this as the finishing touch. And next we're going to add in our turnip roots and that's going to cook down right along with everything else. And you're going to allow this to cook for about, you know, 15 or 20 minutes. And I actually have a cover and voila, you are good to go. For this next strategy, we are actually going to be preparing kale salad. So as you can see, we've got our curly kale here. And what's interesting about kale is that even though it's slightly um, uh, fibrous a bit, we're going to actually take this portion, this rib portion and the back of the kale out uh, so that it becomes a little more uh, easier to eat. So it doesn't take very long. Just cut the rib out and toss it here. And so now we're just going to chop the kale. And this is a fairly short leafy green, so you can place this in a bowl. And if you find that your kale is a bit uh, too tough uh, to eat, you can actually do a really cool technique that I enjoy, which is massaging the kale uh, with some oil and some herbs. And what that does is actually makes it a bit more tender to the bite. And it also brings in a bunch of the flavors from your seasonings and your oils into the leafy green for a delicious salad. So I'm gonna show you very quickly exactly what I mean by massaging it. You're gonna just add a little bit of oil whatever your preference is. Add some herb seasoning. And for this case, this is a no salt herb blend. And you're just gonna go in just like this. Gently rub the kale so that you're getting all of those flavors inside of the leaf. And after massaging it, to add a bit of zest on top of this, I like to add a splash of lemon juice, just like that. And you can just toss it just like that and you're good to go. Now, kale serves as a great base for other ingredients and I just happen to have a pepper on hand and some uh, purple cabbage, which I like to add to salads. So whatever it is that you choose and whatever it is that you like in your salads, you can also add it to your kale. But that's it. Very simple. Okay, for the next strategy, I'm going to show you how to prepare your butternut squash that came in your winter food box. Now, one thing I will say about butternut squashes, they are very hard. And this is ideal for storage, but it is not ideal for cutting. So I'm going to show you a few steps on how to actually prepare this so that it can be cut and so that it can be cooked. The first thing that you want to do, oh, I want to mention that this has actually been washed and that's very important because you want to make sure that all of your produce is washed before you prepare it and consume it. So this has been washed, this has been inspected and we are good to go. So I am going to actually cut the ends off of this squash. You want to take a nice sturdy knife and just slice right at the ends. And one thing that you want to do before you prepare this for uh, putting in the microwave, you want to take this squash and pierce the surface of your squash just a bit. And what this does is allow uh, heat and steam to really permeate the squash so that it can cook even faster. And so from here, I will be putting this into a casserole dish. And you can use a lid or you don't have to use a lid, but you want to cover this and place this into a microwave and cook it for about seven to 12 minutes, depending on the settings of your microwave. And what that will do is allow your squash to be tenderized and softened so that it's ideal for cutting and cooking. We are still with our butternut squash that came out of the microwave. And I do want to mention, 
If you don't have a microwave, using an oven will accomplish the same mission, but it might take a bit longer as you need to cook it at about 350 for 15 to 20 minutes. And so once your butternut squash has come out of the microwave or out of the oven, it should be tender enough for you to slice it and prepare it for the next step that I'm gonna talk about soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in the middle effortless. And as you can see, so we've sliced the butternut squash, and as you can see, there are seeds inside. So what we're gonna do is actually scoop these out. And I don't know about you, but my typical meals do not require an entire butternut squash. So what you can do, since it's cut in half, is sit this over to the side and store it for another day. But I'm just gonna take these seeds out just in case. And it doesn't take much to scoop them out. Set this over to the side and do the exact same thing for this one. Okay, so now we're done scooping out the seeds of the butternut squash and we're gonna prepare it for the next step, which is uh, putting it back into the microwave so that we can soften it just a bit more so that we can scoop out the inside of the squash and separate it from this more tough, uh, the tougher skin on the outside. And one thing I want to mention is that as you're preparing to put it into the microwave, you wanna place it face down here and I've got some water prepared on the side. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. And what that will do is create a nice steaming effect to further tenderize the squash so that it's easier to prepare. And once we're done doing that, add the lid to create the steaming effect and put it into the microwave and cook it for another 10 or so minutes on high.